In this video I want to talk about painting a freshly plastered or textured surface, you know, wall or ceiling. The first thing you need to do is, once your area has been plastered or textured, you must let the whole job dry off. There must not be any dark patches on the plaster or the texture. The plaster or the texture has to fully dry before you commence any type of painting. When your plaster or texture is fully dried into the surface, the surface then, the plaster or the texture, is very, very porous because all the moisture has been taken out of the plaster or the texture and now it's fully dry. So that means the surface now is very, very porous, very dry, very porous. So you've got to make sure you're painting it correctly so your paint actually sticks onto the surface. Use ordinary water. I'm just going to dab ordinary water onto the surface. And you can see how quickly that will dry in. I mean, if we touch it now, anyway, if we touch it now, it is almost bone dry. This won't take long now before this actually absorbs into the plaster or the texture. If you wanted to texture onto this freshly plastered wall, you can see if you mix up your texture, to your required consistency. You lay it on the wall prior to creating a pattern or the brush pattern or the comb pattern and if you lay it directly onto this very porous ceiling obviously the texture is going to go stiff very very quickly it's going to go rigid you won't be able to draw your tool through there your comb or your brush so an area like this needs to be sealed or primed and left to dry prior to texturing. It also applies to if you've got a wall cover, wallpaper, it's going to be very porous so we'll need a primer first and of course with paint as well. When you purchase most paints for indoor use um, which are called emulsions, they're mainly the majority of the time when you get a quality one they have a thick consistency. If you roll it or brush it directly onto this surface it's not such a good idea because the paint is too thick. But I'm going to show you an example of using a thick emulsion. I'm going to just paint some on there and we can have a look then. I'm using Magnolia. As you can probably see, it is of a thick consistency. Spread it right out. But when this dries, the consistency of the paint was quite thick, it will draw the moisture out because there's not much moisture in there into the surface and it'll leave the top layer. And it's quite possible for this top layer to come off with your fingernail once it's dry. So what's recommended is to dilute the emulsion down with cold water for the first coat of bare plaster or a new textured surface. I've left this emulsion, which I haven't watered down or diluted. It's only been on it a few minutes. I want to show you an ex example that if I start scraping off very gently, you can see the moisture from the paint absorbing into the wall. What will happen then is it'll leave a layer on top of the plaster or the texture once all the moisture is dried right in, so when this paint is dried right in, all this moisture that's in the paint, because it's water-based paint, for interior ceilings and walls, and it's matte emulsion, so that leaves a matte finish, a non-sheen finish. And you can see there the shell of the paint, or the coating of the paint which I'm scraping off now, this is just for demonstration purposes. When I wet this paint and dilute it more and put a sample under the wall, you'll find that it won't scrape off so easy. So really, this paint on this wall now, because it hasn't been diluted for the first coat, is not making a key. It's not absorbing it sufficiently into the bare plaster. And then when you second coat on top of it, you may experience problems of the very first coat, i.e. the key, will come off and of course any sub 
any other coat on top of that will come off with it. So this is why we need to dilute our first coat when we're working on bare plaster or bare texture finish. And then what I'm going to use is contract matte emulsion, which is for interior ceilings and walls. Yeah, matte, a non-shiny surface. And I'm going to pour some of that into the trough and then I'm going to add water and mix it well to dilute this consistency which is uh, rather thick. Right, I'm going to add some clean water, cold clean water. I'm going to mix this now and check the consistency of the emulsion. So mix it in well. See this consistency now? It's practically dribbling off, but it's still quite thick. So what I'm going to do, I'm, going to, I'm actually going to add a bit more water to get it even thinner for the first coat. And this is quite essential. That's the consistency now, compared to the consistency of the original paint. Yeah, this is what came out before I added water. This emulsion here, which I have not watered down, is just too thick for the first coat on a porous surface. Hence, we've wet it down. And there you, are. you can see that's more transparent, thinner, but this is okay. We need that transparency and the thinner paint so it keys into the surface. For the roller I'm using, you can use a sponge, you can use a paintbrush just to paint the surface if you want to, which will take you ages and ages. This is a 9 inch roller. It's medium pile. You can get them like this as well, which are lambsball, a little bit more expensive, but just as good or better. This one's synthetic material, all nice and fluffy and soft. Let me show you, fluffy, soft, beautiful. Load the roller up. Whenever you load the roller up, don't load, don't get the roller right in and get all the metal and everything wet. Just prime the edge, the fluffy edge of the roller. Yeah. And then we'll commence rolling. Right, if you look carefully now, you can see little lines and roller marks, little splashes. The idea is to just crisscross it nice and gently. And what you're trying to do is take those Gently, you're trying to take those little marks out of the paint so it's all nice and smooth and flat. There we are, this, this is blemish free now, there's no thick lines or stop and start marks, it's all nice and smooth. Crisscross it now, make sure you've got any lines or all the marks out. You don't got to use excessive force, you're just trying to get a coat on and roll it out evenly. Dip the brush in, same, you can see it's quite wet, slap it on the side to get excess off. And then round the pedimeter to the ceiling or the wall, continue to brush in. Now I'm not going to be fussy by cutting in with a brush because I'm going to paint the whole room. So I'm just showing you the brush work. The same rule applies when you're using the brush to cut in. Just make sure you just gently take out any brush marks. Yeah, because as soon as you lay the paint on to the surface, because it's very porous, the emulsion starts drying in straight away. So if you're not quick enough, or you leave it too long, and there's a brush mark or a ridge, it's gonna stay there. Yeah, so the idea is we cut in all the way around the perimeter, and then we'll use our roller and blend the roller into the, uh, blend the emulsion from the roller into the emulsion from the brush. And as you can see there, if you look closely, 
it's still a little bit porous from where I've cut in to where I've rolled on, but that's no, no problem. The idea is here, we're trying to create a key, so we're turning the porous surface into a not so porous surface by adding loads of moisture on the, in the paint, which will draw in, it'll take the pigment of the paint into the, the bare plaster or the bare texture, it'll carry that in, and when it's all dry, it'll be a, a fantastic key then to put our thicker coats of emulsion or paint on. We have the wall fully painted now, fully painted. That's the first coat of very, very watery matte emulsion interior ceiling and wall paint. Yeah, hopefully you might be able to see that it's looking quite patchy. Yeah, you can see little patches, but that's fine, this is ideal. It doesn't matter if it's transparent and patchy, as long as when you roll or brush, you cover every bit of wall with the paint, the watered down paint. The normal step now is to leave this fully dry. Yeah, I've only done this five minutes ago, you can see it's on its way. Once it's fully dry, you check over the surface, and sometimes you might find little lumps. Yeah, and you just get your scraper, take off the little lumps. Let this fully dry first, a couple of hours I would say, before you start scraping any little lumps off. So once you've checked it, you take off any little lumps on the wall, maybe a plaster left or little bits of filler or whatever you, you take them off with a scraper when this surface is fully dry. And then you commence as normal with your painting, you know, filling the edges with um, corking to seal around the edges and get a nice finish. You go around the ceiling, round the walls, round the perimeter. Obviously we're going to paint the ceiling as well, white, that I just wanted to show you. So use corking around the edges, get a nice tidy finish, so it'll fill any cracks and uneven areas right around the perimeter and the edges from wall to wall. And then once that's dry, then you could put the normal coat of emulsion on, which I'll show you quite shortly. A couple of pointers. There is a specialist wall interior ceiling and wall paint you can purchase that's already formulated to paint directly onto plastered or textured ceilings and walls. So you can buy a product already. But um, the way I use it, I use the emulsion, the colour I'm going to use, and I'll water that first coat down and roll it on and create a key, let it dry completely, and then do all the filling, any filling, you can also, once this is dry, if there's any little blemishes and you need to put filler, this is an ideal surface to, to lay your filler on and then possibly sand down if you want to, let that go off. Any little snots or little lumps, you know, you can use your scraper and you just take off any little, any little blemishes that you might see. It's ideal now because this is the time you'll be able to see any little spots and blemishes or little lumps that you want to take off. So as I said, there's a propriety emulsion that's already formulated to go on top of this. What we're using here, we're using the matte coat and then we're going to second coat this now and it'll be finished. You know, we filled all the edges in, all the perimeters with any filler, any corking material so everything looks tidy. And then finally we can put the second coat of emulsion. We'll roll that on, brushing the edges around the perimeters. If you also look this now, when I did the first coat and I didn't water the emulsion down, I put it on thick, it peeled off quite easy. But with this now, this is absorbed right into the plaster, it's taken a lot of paint into the plaster, it's left a, a coat on top of the plaster which is not so porous as it was when it was first plastered. And using my nails. Yeah, so that means it's actually absorbed into the paint a bit better, so this is what we want. So this is a good key and a good base now to put your final coat of emulsion. Also, if you're doing a bathroom or a kitchen or moisture, where there's area where there's moisture, it's not very good to paint the second coat with a matte emulsion because the water, the moisture will penetrate through the wall or through the paint and it should start reacting with the paint and possibly bubbling it off. So for bathrooms and kitchens, there is a proper paint or emulsion for interior use, which creates a sheen once it's laid onto the wall or the ceiling. It leaves a, the surface is shiny. It leaves a sheen and moisture 
tends to collect onto the onto the surface and just dribble down, dribble down and dribble down, and that's ideal. And you can wash it so it's washable, and that is we call it bathroom and kitchen paint, or another one is vinyl silk emulsion. So it's a matte, it's a silk finish, it's a shiny finish, which is ideal for moisture areas, you know, compared to the matte emulsion. But if you've got bare plaster or bare texture, don't directly put vinyl silk and roll it or paint it onto your plaster or texture for the first coat. That's a, a definite no-no because what will happen, you lay it on there, the paint will go off. Once it's gone off, you'll be able to take an edge and peel it off like a polythene bag. So if you put a, a mat on first and then that absorb into it and then put a vinyl silk on for if you want a shiny finish, that should key into the mat a bit better. Um, and, and also like it's advisable if you've got the silk, the vinyl silk, to water the first coat down, you know, and then put a couple of coats on and build it up that way to try and get a, a finish. Please leave a comment.